here for in this video we're going to show you how to use the models in the BMI number two CNC project uh, and with this particular layout we're going to show you how to easily put the Cupid's bow and arrow back into his hands and you may ask why did we give you the Cupid without the bow and arrow already already in his hands well because we thought that it might be useful if you could use the Cupid also to hold a banner instead so you can use this double Cupid thing might be great for of course an anniversary gift or maybe even a um, uh, a baby's crib or something like that which would be perfect so we're going to go ahead and minimize that and we're going to bring up uh, vCarve Pro Desktop. Now it's important to remember that the tools that I'm going to use uh, in vCarve Pro Desktop are also available in vCarve Pro version 8 and Aspire. So we're going to create a brand new project. Now it really doesn't matter how big this project is because I'm not actually going to machine it but I, I need it big enough so you can see all the parts. So um, my rule of thumb is if you make a 6 by 6 inch workspace about 85 percent to 90 percent of the models will fit into that right uh, right from the get-go when you double click on them in your clip art library so that just makes it easy for us uh, I'm going to use a, a three-quarter inch thickness again I'm not going to machine it so it doesn't matter datums in the center really doesn't matter but it's there but it does matter that I'm going to use a very high resolution I want to be able to see this really well so we're going to click OK and we're going to go to our clip art tab I'm going to go to my design and make and I've already installed the BMine number two project right underneath the B9, BMine number one project and we're going to double click on the Cupid and we're going to bring him in and then we're going to double click on the Cupid's bow and arrows. Now you'll see that the bow and arrow is really out of scale compared to the Cupid. That's that way for a reason. Um, when we modeled the um, the Cupid's bow and arrows, it uh, we wanted you to be able to machine it on its own without losing a lot of, losing a lot of detail. So if we gave it to you at the size that the Cupid needed it, then uh, you might lose some detail if you decide to make it large. So let's flip over to our 3D view. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to size down our bow and arrow to fit into um, the approximate location it should be. So in this particular um, layout, I'm going to shoot for the arrow needs to fit on top of the fingers of the cupid and the tail of the arrow needs to fit on the other hand of the cupid. So now that I have the bow and arrow selected, I'm going to use the sizing handles here. I'm just going to scale it down to there. You notice I'm doing this in the 3D view so we're not even going to look at the 2D view today like that and that was just a really good guess seemed to pretty much be bang on except for it needs to be a little bit larger at this end so let's just make it a little bit bigger and then we're going to use our cursor keys to nudge it up into place. That's our arrow keys. And that looks pretty good right there. Now I could bring it in a little tighter if I wanted to but I don't mind there being a little bit of a gap there that way my cutter might be able to get in there a little bit and give me some definition maybe to hold some stain and so on in there once it's all done machining. So that looks pretty decent. So let's go ahead now and a couple things I want to point out is that the the hand of the cupid is actually angled so the pinky is lower than the thumb and the trigger finger which makes sense. So when I bring up the base height of the the bow, if I, if I bring it up to the point where it fits on the top, it's going to start to show through his finger at the bottom. So I'll show you that. I'll bring up the floating properties again. And if I bring that up, um, the base height up so that it fits properly in his the top of his hand, I'm just going to use the little slider here that's perfect but you'll see that it kind of fits in this bottom of his hand kind of funny so that's not going to work for us just doing that so what we're going to do is we're going to bring up to the point where his pinky where, where is just above the handle of the bow so we're going to go ahead and change that down a little bit to it there that looks good There's still a little bit of a gap there that was by the way very organically I didn't mean to for it to stop there it just stopped there that's where I happened to let go of my finger and now what we're going to do is we're going to use the tilt function here to tilt this up from this side to the, from, from the, the pointy end of the arrow to the tail end of the arrow we're gonna tilt it up so that it ends up bringing these feathers out proud of the cupid's neck and chest and in turn that'll bring up all of these um, the actual um, strings of the bow here uh, up above his face and his belly so let's just go ahead and tilt that so we're gonna select tilt and we're gonna set our two anchor points one at the front of the bow or sorry, the arrow, and one at the back of the arrow, 
and we're going to give it 1% and see what happens. Again, we're just guessing. That may have been a great guess. Look at that. So you'll see there's some definition around here. It looks good. Seems to fit nicely in where his finger is. There's still a bit of a, a bit of a space here below the pinky, which is great. And it fits at the top. So look at that. That happened to be just perfect. So now there we go. And it's ready to go. A nice little layout. Now, if we decided to add this to our to some or sorry, if we decide to add some more models to this layout, it'd be difficult to, to scale these two down uh, independently of each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a feature of um, VCarve and Aspire both, where we can group these together so that it'll act as one model. So we're going to go ahead and group those. We're going to shift select both of those, right click, and we're going to go and group those. And now it's one model essentially but it's retained or it knows that that one model is made up of two. So that's great. So it's a little grouping. Now if I go ahead and double, double, sorry, double click that and I size it down, you'll see that everything is sized down at the same time and everything works out really well. So in that case, if I wanted to bring in the heart shaped box, then I can easily just fit the cupid with this bow and arrow in there. And this happens to be the assembled layout that you get with the project. So you really don't need to do this unless you want to practice. But the idea is just to merge the cupid in there nicely, making sure that the ribbon is tucked in nice and that he looks good. That looks like a good spot for him to be maybe a little bit smaller. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give him a little more shape height because he's now he's stuck down inside this dish. We can actually beef him up a little bit. So we need to figure out what the height is of of this particular model. So we're going to go ahead bring up our floating dialog and it's one it's 0.19 so 196 so if we made the shape height of our cupid 0.19 he would fit nicely inside of that heart shape and we have a nice little layout ready to add in some v-carving maybe the box top of a valentine's gift or a, an engagement ring box or even just a, a wall decoration for valentine's day anyway hope that was helpful and just as a little recap all we did is we went over bringing in some models from our clipart library, uh, sizing them up and down, um, making sure that we use the tilt feature um, for our models, and then we grouped them together. And there you have it. I hope that was helpful.